Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the MTI Wireless Edge Limited Results Investor Presentation for the six months ended 30th of June 2021. Throughout this presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged. You can be submitted at any time via the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Just click Q&A, go to the bottom of the screen, type in your question and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it's appropriate to do so. These will be available via your investment meet company dashboard and you'll be notified once they're ready for your review. I'd also like to remind you that this presentation is being recorded. Before we begin, I'd like to submit the following poll. And I'd now like to hand you over to Moni Borovitz, CEO of MTI Wireless Edge. Moni, good morning. Good morning, Paul. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, I will present the six months results uh, ended June 30. And I will uh, take into assumption that people already know the company. So I'll run through what the uh, we did in the six months and what are the prospects of uh, the business uh, ahead of us. Just as a quick reminder, we are a technology company uh, focused on wireless, radio frequency, and microwave solutions. We are operating via three division, uh, the antenna, which represents about 27% of our revenue, the wireless controller for water management, which is about 40% of the revenue, and the distribution and professional services, which is about 33% of our revenue. If I compare the revenue split uh, between the different segment and the geographical split of the revenues uh, to last year, you would see that there was not a, a huge significant it shows that even though the COVID continue, we continue to perform as usual. <clears throat> I think that the result for the six months are very strong. We are very happy with them. Uh, revenue was up 9% and falling all the way down to the earning per share who grew by 14%. The pandemic is still here. It still affects uh, some parts of our business. But overall, I can say that the uh, demand for water management, the 5G rollout, and the increased defense budget uh, that helps our distribution business are still pushing the business forward. Like always, uh, we make a lot of effort and are able to uh, transfer most of the profits into cash flow. This was the case in the six months as well. And our net cash increased 20% year on year. Uh, going a little bit into the numbers themselves, you can see that both in the first half and in the second quarter, we had nice revenue growth. And as I indicated, it fell all the way down to the earning per share. It's important to remind uh, that our long-term business model is to add 15% to the operational uh, profit on any additional dollar of revenue that we generate. This was the case in the six months, and we are happy to meet the, the, this goal. Uh, we have a strong balance sheet, solid one. If you can see uh, that the real estate and from which we operate and the net cash represent over 50% uh, of our net assets. Uh, we like to have this uh, nice cash uh, balance on the balance sheet. It helps us to uh, continue with the buyback program that we have in place to pay the dividends and to continue and look for acquisitions. As you have heard me before, it is always on a better safe and sorry mode. It means that we will do an acquisition only uh, when we find the suitable acquisition, value added, profit enhancing from day one, and so on. Uh, getting into details of about what we did and what we see in the business itself, I will start with the antenna division. Uh, we are experiencing some kind of a transition period in the antenna business where the uh, legacy fixed broadband access is declining, while the 5G and RFID are the growth engine in the commercial antenna division. I'm happy to say uh, that this is the first time that we see that the revenue uh, from the 5G together with the revenue from RFID is exceeding uh, the legacy uh, part of the business. And this means that if those two uh, growth engines continue to grow, we should start uh, seeing the growth in the antenna business. Uh, going into the 5G, uh, we had a very nice first year, a growth of over 55% year on year comparing to last year. And not only that, we continue to strengthen our relation with the existing customers that we have. 
uh, developing a new solution for what they need. So we think we are in a very well position for that. Regarding RFID, if you remember last year when we discussed, it was fairly slow due to COVID. And now it's the third consecutive quarter that you see, that we see that it is uh, returning to the level of pre-COVID-19. I hope it's a trend. I hope that the pandemic or the new variant will not kill it again. But we are very optimistic about uh, the future of this uh, segment. Several weeks ago, we announced about a project that we started in the uh, space area, uh, doing antennas for satellites. Uh, it's a new area for MDI, and we see ourselves as a technology company, and if we can adopt the existing technology to new application, it's something we should try, especially if we are getting grants for most of the part of the development and taking minimal rates to explore new areas. Beside that, we have the military division of the antennas. This was uh, going quite well for us in the six months. Although military is a bit slower uh, due to the uh, pandemic, uh, it is less suitable for a uh, Zoom and Teams meeting. Uh, everything is more classified and confidential, so you need a lot of face-to-face -face meeting. So we did slow a little bit. But having said that, we just announced last week a very important uh, contract win a new customer for us, it's for a naval application, and we are very satisfied uh, with this progress as well. A little more focus on 5G, which is the biggest uh, growth engine uh, for us in this market. Uh, this is a new research that was published uh, earlier this year. And my key takeaway is, first of all, that they explicitly uh, talk about the E-band, where our dual band antenna uh, lies. And it's important to see that they forecast a nice growth for it. On top of it, our technology, flat antenna technology for the small cell vehicle is again something that everybody predicts like a very high growth potential. And our key target at the moment is to stick to the key customers that we have. I remind you that we work with four out of the seven key radio manufacturers in this area. And as long as we make them happy uh, to work with us, uh, we will grow when the market is growing. Moving to the uh, wireless controllers for water management. Again, this is our largest division uh, revenue-wise at the moment. Uh, I think that we have all seen in the last uh, several weeks uh, the global climate change uh, effects, uh, floods in many places, fires in many places, and on a macro level, people understand that uh, sweet water are critical and something that uh, we should manage. If I look into uh, the micro progress that we made in the business, I'll start with our new subsidiary in Canada. Uh, as a reminder, we opened it in February this year. Uh, we were already able to secure a, a key a service agreement. Uh, with a, a large municipality that is uh, running one of the biggest uh, landscape system in the world. On top of it, we uh, retained all the existing customer that our value-added reseller had there, and we uh, see nice volume of business. Most of it will come in as revenue in the second half of the year, as it took some time uh, paperwork-wise uh, to open our as a vendor to those municipalities, uh, so we see a very good progress in this area. I've spoken in the past quite a lot on the French vineyards, and I'm still very happy uh, with the prospect that this shows. We continue uh, to develop the market there. Uh, actually, our technician traveled there not too long ago. It's the only place when we send a technician uh, in this pandemic area because we understood that they need the support, the local support there. He came back uh, very enthusiastic, lots of installation, lots of requirements for new development, and it looks like a very nice opportunity for us. We also announced during the six months on some of the big uh, contract renewals we have for services. It's important to remember that about 20% of this division revenue is coming from uh, service and maintenance. And it's not only in Israel that we signed with our largest uh, service uh, customer for several years. We also increased the service level we do in Australia and the service is continuing to generate more and more uh, work for us. 
I talked about uh, our wired extension in the last presentation that I gave that it was only coming out into the market and we are very happy with that. Uh, the Motec decoder system is very well accepted. Uh, we see nice backlog of orders. And again, like the Canadian office, we would see the impact on revenue in the second half of the year. Again, on a more macro level, you can see at the bottom of the slide, a new research that was published about smart irrigation and the growth it is supposed uh, to bring into the market. Uh, one must understand that the numbers themselves, the absolute uh, dollars, do include hydraulic and pipes where we are not part of. But for me, it is very encouraging to see the expected growth in smart irrigation because smart mean controller and you need controllers in order to uh, continue with the smart irrigation. Moving to the third division, I think I said it before, but this is the jewel of the crown in the last uh, couple of years. Uh, just as a reminder, the distribution business did in entire 2018 8.5 million dollar in revenue and we finished the six months of this year with 7 million. So we are getting closer to double uh, the business. It looks very nice and this is in the pandemic uh, period of area. We continue to have very strong design wins and solutions that are both in the Israeli and the Russian market. Just to give some ideas, so in these six months we grew this business by over 20% year on year. We have here a segment of the Tethered Balloon project where we do consulting uh, for governments on installing a Tethered Balloon for intelligence use. There is a big project that is running right now in Israel. It had some delays in the second quarter. We assume that it will resume uh, towards the end of this quarter or uh, entering into the fourth quarter and allow us again to expand the services into 2022 and onwards. So if I conclude, I think it was a positive uh, performance for the first half. I think that all of our gross drivers are in place, whether it's the 5G, the water management, or the design wins that we continue to do. We have the strong balance sheet uh, to continue and pay the dividends, do the buybacks, and look for acquisition. And I'm happy to take any question at this uh, point of time. That's fantastic. Thank you very much indeed, Moni, for the presentation. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, do please continue to submit your questions using the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Uh, just click Q&A, type your question and press 10, but just while Moni takes a few moments just to review those questions submitted already, I'd like to remind you that recording the presentation along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A can be accessed via your investor dashboard and the Investor Meet Company platform. I'd also like to remind you um, that your feedback is important to the company and immediately after the presentation has ended you'll be redirected for the opportunity to provide your feedback in order that the company can better understand your views and expectations. Bonnie, um, we did have a pre-submitted question that came through and perhaps I can just address this to you to start with um, and it's around drones. Um, are the use of drones for crop and water management something you're willing to consider? Yeah sure, for us drone is a is a sensor at the end of the day. It's a flying sensor, but it is a sensor, and our system is already suitable to connect either direct at the controller level or as an API at the cloud. So drones are part of something that is used today to collect data, and we are ready to integrate with it. Thank you, Moni. That's fantastic. And if I may, just if you could just click on the Q&A tab just to see uh, what we've got coming through there um, and uh, where appropriate, just read out the question and give your response. That'd be great. Thank you. I have a question from Andy. What areas don't you see the most growth in the business? Uh, so as I mentioned in the legacy antenna business, which is fixed wireless access, uh, we see some decline. Part of it is due to the pandemic uh, that there are less installation. And some is, I, I suspect, that people are waiting for 5G uh, to take over. I have a question from GISO. Do you expect profit margin improvement in antenna with sale growth in 5G? Uh, so first of all, if you look at the antenna segments in the six months, and you can find it in our financial, Although revenue declined a little bit, the operation margin was better. 
I think that this is due to the uh, mix of products. And at the end of the day, what's important to me is that uh, on the consolidated basis, as I said, on any additional of dollar of revenue, our target is to make 15 to 20 uh, cents operational profit. I'm going to Michael. Uh, for the consulting division, can you advise how many projects have resulted in launched product and hence continuing revenue stream for the company? Is the value significant? I'm not sure I fully understand the question. I will try to give an example, and we did so in the last quarter. Uh, we are involved in tens, if not of hundreds of projects in the consulting business. Uh, we are designing more, we represent more than 40 companies from overseas and they have thousands of uh, components that we uh, sell into the Israeli market and each and one of them is a design win. So some can be a relatively small amount, some can be bigger amounts and usually when we design, when it's in the early stage of development and two to three years later the production will start and will run for several years. So it's a uh, and most of the revenue is from that. So I think it is significant in value uh, when we consolidate it. Simon asks, if, can you give a little detail of what you look for in acquisition? Any new areas of in that interest you? Uh, we are specializing in wireless communication. So we need something that will uh, be wireless, that we can add value to it or it can add value for us. We don't limit ourselves. Our limitation is added value and profit enhancing from day one. These are the main key issue. Uh, do you have any seasonality in earnings between age one and age two? Uh, I think we do. If you look at the past, you see that generally the second half is better in revenues and profits. Uh, so this is it. Uh, another question from Philip. Have Israel recent territories with Arab countries open up new markets for your company? Uh, yes and no, and I'll explain. Uh, we are not politician. We are trying to be business, and I can tell you uh, a secret that everybody knows, a known secret, that Israel is working with the Gulf countries on many areas for many years. In many cases, it was indirect. Now it is more possible to work direct. It saves cost, uh, so we continue to do that, and we will continue to do that. Uh, Peter, I ask, please remind me what percentage of your business is your biggest customer has. Uh, I think it is about 10 to 12 percent, and it lies between the distribution business and the antenna business. It's a it's a one large defense company that buys antennas and buys a lot of equipment from us. Uh, do you run your business as a U.S. company uh, to maximize U.S. earnings? Yes, we are budgeted in dollars, we work in dollars, and actually sometimes, like now when the dollar is weak, we are uh, heated by the dollar. Uh, Nick asks, what do you directly, who do you directly compete with, and at which point level do you sell into, and what visibility do you have in revenue? Okay, so it varies from each and every division. Again, in the antenna division, we have the military that we compete with uh, many companies like European Microwave, like Shelton, some division of the big companies, the system companies like Smiths and Fkobam, they have their own antenna division. Uh, in the commercial market, we compete with a company like Andrew or Comscope. Uh, so it varies. And in this business, we have a fairly short order book, but better, I would say, understanding of what is going on because we are tied with the same customers for many years. It's not easy to replace an antenna manufacturer. So although it's not a firm view, we fairly know where we will be. In the wireless irrigation business, uh, we compete with companies like Hunter, like Toro, 
these are huge company that sell the entire equipment, no, not only the controller. Our advantage here is the Motorola system that is the base of our hardware. And here again, we ship within six to eight weeks, but we work around the globe, a lot of value added resellers, so we know to estimate uh, where we are. And in terms of the consulting business, we are the largest one in Israel today in RF and microwave. We have a lot of other representative companies that compete with us, but we have a, a fair good amount of a solution that we offer. Uh, and again, here the uh, view or visibility is a bit longer because even if it's not orders, we know that we are in a project and as long as the project run, you will not be replaced. Uh, how do you manage the risk of key employees leaving? Uh, so first of all, uh, we had until not too long ago an option plan for employees, for key employees. Uh, I'm happy to say that most of them were able to exercise and make money on those options. And we will consider to do maybe another option plan. But in parallel, we do give them, a, a, they have a profit enhancing a, agreement that they share some of the profits of the company and uh, we try to make them happy. If you got protection to prevent takeover by a larger competitor, uh, according to the Israeli law, which the company is still under it, uh, if somebody wants to become an owner of over 45% of the company, as right now no one owns over 45%, uh, it needs to go through a public offering for everybody. Uh, so I think this is a good system to prevent it. And also I think that since we are so diverse, it will be less interesting to one specific candidate to take over everything. We will probably approach to try and buy a division. Morning, fantastic. That's fantastic indeed. You've covered literally all the questions. So thank you very much indeed. And if there are any further questions submitted uh, by investors today, of course, Moni will be able to review those uh, and post responses where appropriate to do so. Moni, perhaps if I may just ask you just for a few final words just to wrap up, please. Yes, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today and thank you for the holders for their support. And uh, we look uh, forward for meeting again. That's fantastic, Molly. Thank you indeed for updating investors today. Could I please ask investors not to close the session as you'll be automatically redirected for the opportunity to provide your feedback in order that Molly and the team can better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few minutes to complete and is greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of MTI Wireless Edge Limited, we'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation. That concludes today's session. Thank you and good morning. <laughs>